remember that the Paul wrote to the Corinthians and said that the natural man cannot accept the things of the Spirit of God because they're spiritually praised. And we need to be appraising everything spiritually, right? So I want to talk about a bond servant. Yes. Okay. And I, I've had conversations, and I know they upset a lot of people yes. because they get a lot of response to this. The Word of God says, John chapter 8, verse 36 says, So, if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. And you know, it says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I understand that. You see, before we were saved, we were in bondage. We were slaves to sin. Mm -hmm. Okay? We, we were, in fact, serving in servitude to the devil. That's what the Word says. So now I say, okay, we're supposed to be bond servants. And people say, no, I've been set free by God. Don't tell me I'm a servant. Well, you have to have been a slave and been set free in order to be a bond servant. Okay? By definition. Listen to where the term comes from originally. In Exodus 21, I'm going to read verses 5 through 6. But if the slave plainly says... Now, this is a slave who has been granted freedom by his masters. Mm -hmm. If the slave plainly says, I love my master, my wife, my children, I will not go out as a free man. Then his master shall bring him to God, and then he shall bring him to the door of the doorpost. And his master shall pierce his ear with an awl, and he shall serve him permanently. Okay? That means you've been set free, but you choose to say no. My desire is to serve you, to call Jesus Lord and Master, okay? Just, I, I find this interesting, so I want you to think about this just a second, okay? okay? The bond servant, and God distinguishes that. The book of Revelation, it says in the first verse, is written to the bond servants of Jesus Christ, right? So if you don't accept what you're saying about the bond servant, don't even read that book. So, you so know what? Two bond servants. Yeah. Right. You, you better off not even. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Okay. So the idea is that when you voluntarily, this is what the practice, voluntarily said you're set free by your master, mm -hmm. and you say no, I don't want to leave you. Right. I want to serve you. It's my this. See, it's not. It's not an obligation anymore. Now it is the heart cry, I want to serve you, Lord. Right? So he would take it to the doorpost. I don't understand where this comes from. And they would literally pierce the ear. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to say something. I want you to think about this. True Christianity requires piercings. Uh -huh. <laughs> now this is why in the world, those out there in the world, those who are in the power of the evil one, he's trying to make a mockery of this. Yes. And that's why you see so many people, and, and always been popular in pagan cultures, piercing, yes. being pierced, all right? True Christianity has pierced yes. hands that's right. and pierced ears. Mm. Think about it, right? Jesus Christ was pierced. Was pierced. And apparently from Scripture, from Old Testament prophecies, when we see him face to face, he will still have those in wounds in his scarred hands. Mm -hmm. He'll say to his own people, these are the wounds that I was wounded in the house of my friends. Mm -hmm. Okay? He was wounded and pierced in his hands for our transgressions. We have to be pierced in a year and this is spiritually. That's why I said well, you know, we're supposed to appraise all of this spiritually. We have to be pierced in our in our the ears of our hearts, so to speak, to say, Lord, we, we serve you because we desire to serve you. And it's interesting in Revelations, because the book is written to the bond servants. The bond servants. And at the end of each one for the church, it says, He who has an ear, let him hear. Yeah. So there's a lot more to that than, than I can spend time with here. But, but think about that. That Christianity is a religion that required piercings. piercings. Two piercings, right? Not mutilation. No, no. Which is what the world is. That's what the world, because Satan is attempting. He tries to make a counterfeit of everything. 
That's his counterfeit of this truth, right? Your mind.